Uh, no, no, Shatam is uh, not coming back, unfortunately. Salisu Nader is coming back. Uh, Juan Larios is still in a long term injury. Tino Libramento is uh, playing today for the B team in part, as a part of his uh, rehab. And hopefully it's going well, and then he will be with us. And then Ms. Laforsic has some hip problem during the week, and then he's not going to be available. And Salisu is injured, is he? Because there have been reports mm -hmm. that. It's an attitude issue or uncertainty over his no. club. He, no. came, uh, he went with the national team. He had some problems in the past. Also, he missed uh, some of uh, the games for us, uh, for example, against Chelsea. Then when he went to the national team, he felt it again. And then when he came back, uh, we needed to put him into the injury process. And then he was expected to play today also for the big team to try to get this uh, the problem uh, a little bit uh, solved if it was good. but. He didn't feel great, so he's not available neither. What's for today. the injury, sorry? Uh, the injury, I think, is related with his hip, with his, with his doctor. So has been some problems there from, from before, from, from during the season also. And uh, it just uh, gets worse. So they are just trying to, to take the therapy with that. No issue with his attitude, though? Uh, he's an injury player. We cannot have an issue with the attitude uh, if he's injured. So we talk about the players that are available. Salisu, unfortunately, is not uh, available for us, so uh, the issues for the attitude will be for the players that are with us working and trying to compete for tomorrow's game. And uh, five wins, uh, five games rather now without a win. How confident are you that you can stay in the Premier League this season still? Yeah, well, I'm still confident. I think the, that it's a fact that uh, we didn't win in the last uh, five games, but it's also a fact that we won uh, two of the, la of the first three that we played and uh, together. And then I think we have arguments and we have shown how competitive we can be. And we are still alive and we are still there to get the three points tomorrow and then move forward into the last part of the season with attitude, with commitment and uh, all together trying to get the very best. Do you feel this group has the fight needed to stay up? Yeah, I say from the very beginning that the group has it and the players, uh, they have it. And uh, I, I say it's, uh, they have been working really well and then it's just uh, Tomorrow is uh, we take one game at a time, and then it's tomorrow to put all this fight and football that we have inside, and then just go for it. Is this game must win? I know it's a cliche, but can you afford to not take three points? Yeah, it's a cliche, of course, but uh, every game is must win. But uh, we need to put everything tomorrow to get the three points, to make a good performance, to be strong tomorrow, and then get the three points that will help us a lot in the situation, and we go for it. Especially when you look at what's to come as well. Three teams in the bottom half, aren't there? This is one of them. This is one you really feel could be pivotal, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah, but uh, again, we, we, we have been trying to fight, play and win to every single opponent. It doesn't matter which part. We tried last week against Manchester City. We tried the week before. And I think, uh, of course, it's important the game uh, against Crystal Palace. I think they are still a little bit away from the relegation zone. Uh, but uh, for us, it doesn't matter who is the opponent. We need to show ourselves and then we need to go for it. What can the fans do to help? I think they need to be our player number 12. They need to be even more committed to the game. They need to be make more noise. They need to be even more there for us. Uh, they need to feel, we need to feel their support. They have been doing OK. We didn't give uh, a lot of reasons to them to be that uh, supportive. But I think now that the key moments are coming, if we can feel them, uh, we, they will give for us this extra level of energy and commitment that we need. And uh, I think they can do a lot for us. Since Roy Hodgson returned to Crystal Palace, they've won two games on the bounce. Is that a slight concern that they're having that man new manager bounce? No, no, it's not uh, special. We just need to analyse uh, what happened uh, since uh, the new manager took over and then how he changed the things. And I think it's uh, clear what uh, he's doing and what he did in, the, in his uh, previous teams. So we also had this a little bit, this bounce back when we beat Leicester and Chelsea in the first two games. And we know what does it mean in the first three games. And we know what does it mean. But uh, again, we need to be effective in what we do. We need to be effective in our game plan. And we need to have 11 players playing the same idea at the same time and uh, with the commitment and the aggressivity to go for it. What do you make of Roy Hodgson as a manager? How much have you followed his career? And what, what do you expect from the way he sets up his team and in particular Palace? Mm -hmm. I think uh, we have in common that he also worked in FC Copenhagen, if I will inform it. And then uh, his background has been always teams that are very aggressive in the, in the attack, trying to get a lot of crosses, a lot of shots from different positions, from the 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1 and sometimes now. And then being very structured in the defensive moment. And that is, uh, I think that's, uh, that's uh, 
his identity as a coach. So I think uh, he's doing that with uh, with Crystal Palace, and that's what we can expect for tomorrow. Funny from me, scoring goals has been an issue this season. No Shea Adams. What, what do you need to do differently, or how can you ensure that you take your chances, that you create more chances, that the goals start going in? Yeah, well, I, I don't think it's about chance creation because uh, we already created. We have uh, we have been analysing for the example the last game against Manchester City and in the first half with zero zero, we have at least four situations that if we occupy the spaces that we need to occupy in the box, uh, we can hurt them. And it has been happening uh, in some games. I think in the Tottenham game we saw exactly what we won from the final third. And then I think we need to put more of those behaviours into the pitch, occupying the spaces and arriving into the final third with a clear idea of what we want more than have one or two strikers in the pitch is the areas that we occupy when we are in the last third and how we arrive there to score the goal. So that has been our focus in the week, but also in the last couple of months, we can say. Thank you. Thank you. How different do you need to play? How, how different is the approach when you know you create those chances against City and Tottenham teams that come at you? Palace are likely to, to want to counter on you. So how, how differently do you need to approach this one? Yeah, I agree. It's a different. You know, every game, uh, every game plan is different. Every opponent is different. Uh, and uh, Crystal Palace showed that the way that they are doing things now, they, you are going to be, uh, you are going to have a little bit more time with the ball in possession in your own half. And then, in the when you arrive in the opposition half, they they are really well organized. So they will try to trap us in some areas that they, they have the they have done in the last two games. And for us, it's, it's important, but it's also different, as you say, because the spaces uh, are not going to be there. So it's a mix between our identity and how we create chances, but adjusting that into the next opponent and the spaces that can be free. And in this case, the rest defence, because they have a powerful counter-attack. How important is, is patience then in that situation as well? I think it's important every time. It's important to composure for to play in the game. It's important to know exactly what we are doing. We talk sometimes about the habits of play, about not being stressful. If you have the, you don't need to make the first or the second pass and end up in a goal. You just need to find the solution. Sometimes will be for a deep run into the first pass. Sometimes. With your, when you are carrying the ball, will be to open some zone to arrive into the pass that will lead into the pass that lead into the goal. I think in those areas uh, we know exactly what we need to do, and hopefully we can put it tomorrow and and play the idea as I think we have been doing uh, in some games. Now we just need to get uh, the end product and the final result in, in our side. Is it difficult at all the sort of the the need to um, make sure your your players are, are, are calm and? and relax, not feeling the pressure, but also then have that urgency that the games are running out, time is running out. Yeah, but the, the, um, unfortunately that has been there from the very beginning since uh, we took over. So we, we are quite, it's not a, we are quite used to play with that, with that, uh, with that feeling. So, and we, we show it that we, we can have the calmness and we can have the, the composure to play against any opponent in the, some different phases. What we need to do is just to do exactly the same, but be a little bit more ruthless when we defend our box and we are being more aggressive when we attack and uh, be committed into the spaces that we want to attack to score goals. And you mentioned there about the, the Copenhagen connection. I know there was 20 years between your, your spells there, but you know, Roy Hodgson was a bit of a hero back then. So did you, did you hear his name mentioned much in your time in Denmark? Well, the sports director, Peter Christiansen, that uh, worked with me in AGF and also in, in FC Copenhagen, was one of his players in that time. Uh, I think David Nielsen, a coach that I worked in Norway, in, in Norway and Denmark, he also played. So, yes, uh, I knew, I know what, what he did there. I know his, the character, I know they, they, they have him in a very good, very good place. And, uh, his reputation there is magnificent and he just helped FC Copenhagen to be to he moved Copenhagen to the next level in level in levels of competitiveness and the people in them are respect him a lot. Good stuff. Thank you, Ruben. Thank Good you. Luck. Ruben, just just on from that. We're all been a bit surprised, I think, uh, the way that we expected Roy, who's got a reputation for being very pragmatic and very well organized, that they have 30 odd shots against Leicester and then scored five at Leeds and I was thinking what's he done to why have they suddenly become this this team that can fire goal shots off every five seconds I mean what's he done to give them that freedom is do you think that's a confidence thing that he's just brought back with when he's arrived or do you think it's something in the way they play yeah I think I think they are much more direct than they were before with uh, with Patrick 
and uh, that suits for the players that he has on the pitch. He has a two powerful eights, uh, he has wingers that can run deep and also have a one against one situation. He had two strikers, uh, Mateta and Edward, that can change. Uh, one can play, the other one can come to the bench, even play together. And uh, it, it has a, a lot of players that individually also as a collective can score goals and can force situations in the final third. So I think his approach has been to reduce the risk in the, f in the first part of the pitch for them in the build-up and then to force situations for them in the last third. So I think, uh, I think reading his team, I think he has been uh, really clever in his approach. Do you think you're going to have to get to a point where you worry less about the build-up and have to do that as a team to, to, to force games? Yeah, well, I think we are a completely different team than Crystal Palace, so we cannot use the same solution with a different tools and um, a different coach than, the, than, the, than the, uh, they have. So I think every club is different and I think every, every group of players, every coach is different. So we just need to do the things that switch for us. And I think uh, we have been doing that in our style and uh, we will continue. And we, as I said last week, we need to move one step forward. All of us, not only the players, us as a team, we need to move one step forward and be more aggressive in our approach for the game. That doesn't mean that we are going to go direct to find the spaces. That means that what we do, we need to do it a little bit better. We haven't talked that much about missing Shea Adams, but he was terrific as being a focal point for players to play off and play past and for him to hold the ball up with his strength. Do you need more of that when he's not on the pitch from somebody else? Do you need do you need that more? Or are you, can you play a different way without him? Because he's been a loss, hasn't he? He's been a loss. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think it's uh, it's not an excuse, but uh, Shea obviously was our capital, one of our capital players. So to have to not being able to have him on the pitch, that means that we need to make some different approaches. Like for example, against City, to use Kamaldin as a striker to try to find those spaces in the after the first pressure and the penetration from him. For tomorrow, we will need a different approach, so we will need a different profile in that position. So yes, it has been there and it is still there. But I think we have players that uh, show that they can cover that position and we can still perform and win football matches. Just finally from me. There's been some really good moments in games recently. You, you, you are five without a win, we know that. But the comeback against Spurs, the first half against City, how do you bottle those and help the players forget the, the bit, but keep the good bit? Well, it's not that we need to forget, that, that we always have the same talk. We, we don't need to forget the things that happen. We just need to continue educating ourselves because it's important when you have such a young team in every single aspect, not only in the players, that in those things that happen, and it happened for us, it happened for every team when they play against Manchester City uh, or against any other big opponent. You need to get the very best of the period that you were good, but you also need to get the very best from the period that you were not good. And we know, for example, in that cross, we need to handle a little bit better the movement from Haaland. And we know that in the second half, we need to be a little bit more closer to don't allow that second ball. And we know that if it's coming, we probably should break the game and then reorganize and don't let us down a little bit. Uh, sometimes it's about a different approach, sometimes it's about to keep the ball a little bit more or to find a player to go against. And so these key moments are the moments that we need to continue learning how we go through. I think we did it in some games uh, against City, uh, even though the potential that they have, I think uh, we had arguments to stay more time in the game. And then it's all about, sometimes it's about situations that can, can lead us into a goal and get the lead in the game, like against the situation before Haaland score. It was a situation for us with Kamaldin. Uh, and if we put those situations, then we will be in a better place. OK, we'll move on to the section for 10.30 this evening. Start with Jacob. Hi, Raymond. Mm -hmm. Do you accept that your home form between now and the end of the season will put pressure and will highlight your players' mentality? I hope so. I hope they are with us and I hope uh, the fans have been amazing because we didn't give a lot of chances for them to be proud of us, but I think they, they support us even in the bad moments. So I hope now it in, in this last call, we go together and they will be, as I say, the player number 12 and they stay there for the very beginning, for the whole game, supporting us and uh, giving us this 1% uh, extra that we need. How do you go about transforming the players' mindsets because it's been the worst home form in the league to now needing perhaps three out of the, out of the last four games to win? Well, uh, we have a no, not a long-term mentality. So that we have in our mind is one game and it's tomorrow. So that transformation, not transformation, but the point should be for tomorrow. And uh, 
And uh, what I do always in everything I do is just to bring a lot of energy with me. And I expect that they do the same. We have been focusing some mental points in the last uh, week, how we can turn these mentality things into physical things. And I expect to see a team that wants to do things and want to play together tomorrow and want to make things very difficult for the opponent. On Samadou, he came back into the match that he scored last week. How is he getting on learning that t number 10 wrong? Yeah, I think Sam has been uh, learning good. And uh, as uh, we, we spoke about, when a player is uh, showing that he can be important for us, uh, and he's involved, so he was back in the last week. Tomorrow, probably, he will be back again. And uh, he has been doing really well, especially since he came back from the international duty. So uh, that's a plus for him because he learned what he needed. And then he's just uh, telling me that he's ready for the next step. Have you seen a difference in his training levels? Is he more intense? Has he got better understanding? Absolutely. He's more intense. He got better understanding. He's uh, more focused in the end product. He's more focused in the moments that he's far away from the ball. Uh, and he's uh, as dangerous as before in one against one situations, so he can step into the team at any moment. And just finally, Moy and Theo, their contract run out at the end of the season. Are they someone that you want them to stay? Um, uh, well, mine also, so <laughs> it's not a big thing. Uh, but you know, I have a trust in Theo and Moy. I think they are capital players for us. Uh, sometimes it's not about technical abilities, that it is in this case also, but it's also about what they bring to the team and. Uh, I don't know what uh, we will do in the future, but for sure those are the two players that uh, you can always come with them. Thank you. Now, you explained about Mohamed Salisu and the injuries picking up, but not just about Salisu, a wider issue. Is there a problem where players don't want to commit, and perhaps you've got 12 months left in the contract, they don't want to sign anyone because they don't know where the club's going to be? Um, I don't see it as a problem. But uh, to be honest with you, I'm not involved in the negotiations for the next year contracts because my, my task is right now and it's a big task right now. So I don't know uh, what is going to be after. So it's enough for me to, to try to carry the situation and try to get the very best and try to keep the team in the Premier League. Uh, I didn't say, I, I will not say that I have seen lack of commitment to anybody in, in those terms about contract situations or anything. Even you we spoke about, uh, Jacob, you spoke about uh, Theo and Moy. And it's for sure not lack of commitment what they show. It's the completely opposite. Is there anything more you can say about Chad as well, an injury? Has it been an injury that's surprised you week on week he hasn't been available? Or had you known it wouldn't be? And is there a time scale for when he might be back? Yeah, we expect him for the end of the month. So we try uh, to force a little bit uh, for the game uh, against the uh, first game after the international duty. But uh, it didn't work. It didn't make it worse, but it was not ready. So we just need to wait. Uh, we prefer to have uh, Shea on point for five games than to force something and then lose him for the rest of the season. Absolutely. And just finally for me, you said at the start when you took the job that you had good contact with Martin Simmons and, and the guys who run the club. Have you spoken to them with eight games to go? Um, are they confident that you can lead the team to survive? Uh, well, I have uh, no reasons to think about uh, a different thing. I have a constant uh, communication with Martin. Uh, and uh, we are still confident that we can do it, uh, as with the rest of some of the members of the board and uh, persons making decisions. So, no, nothing in doubt that we still do it. I think we show that we can do it. We show how good we can be. We just need to get this final bid to get the three points tomorrow and then go for the next game. But it's important for us uh, what happened tomorrow.